Hello from Embedded World 2025. I'm here with James at the Raspberry Pi. We went all the way to Germany to meet a company from UK. So hello and Hi there. Compute Module 5, drag and drop replacement for Compute Module 4. I would say in 99% of the cases it is a drag and drop uh, well, pin compatible. It, it is certainly our intention from the start to make it as pin compatible as possible. Obviously, with the uh, the new RP1 chip on here, which is obviously the same yeah. as the one on the on the Pi 5, there's extra features, and there's some features that are taken away. And what we've done is the ones that have gone away, we've used those spare pins to provide the extra features. And what's gone away is we used to have two DSI, two CSI, so four MIPI ports all together. And like, now, like the Pi 5, we have two MIPI ports, but they they can be either be DSI or CSI. Mm -hmm. So we've got two extra. Uh, the pins for those are now used for the USB 3, which is another advantage of the RP1 chip uh, with, the, with native USB and high-speed USB 3. So. Ever since Raspberry Pi 4, everyone was trying to hack the PCIe. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the most requested features, I think, in the Raspberry Pi 5. What's the adoption is like right now by community, especially by makers community? Uh, uh, as far as I know, not too bad. Um, Obviously, the Pi 5 has got it natively out now. Yeah. Uh, the, the M2 hat's been very popular, um, especially once you have the NVMe storage on the Pi 5, it turns it into a really good desktop machine, very, yeah. very fast. Still good, great with the SD card, which is double the speed of the Pi 4 anyway, um, but, but with the extra PCI speed of the, of the SSDs, that really makes a difference. And of course, you have that now uh, on the it's CM4. Um, it's worth noting there are actually two PCI hubs on the, on the SOC. One talks to the RP1 here, Mm -hmm. For the camera, that's that the RP1 there. So we have a quad lane uh, PCI talks to that, and the the other one is a single lane that talks to the outside world, as you can see on on, on, on the board the there. Yeah. yeah, that's great to see. And uh, honestly, uh, I purchased mine about uh, three weeks ago, my uh -huh. first one, and I couldn't I couldn't kind of fathom that we got to the point where a fully fledged computer is smaller than a matchbox because yeah. that's where we are right now, and it's incredible. Yeah. That's like an essence of embedded. Yeah. In, in here. Yeah. I mean, what's worth knowing is these are ludicrously complicated PCBs. I think it's at least nine layers. So okay. they are very complicated devices. And the guy who designed it um, spent, I think, probably a month trying to fit it all onto the same form factor as the CM4. It was a, an incredible job. He's done a fantastic job on it because it all fits. Yeah. Uh, but we're very limited in, in, in what else we could stick on there now because uh, it's such a ludicrously complicated board. But. Uh, it's a very reliable board as well. I mean, sometimes with uh, complexity comes less reliability, but as far as we know, that's just as reliable as, as the previous model. So. Which kind of ties me nicely to the next question, because particularly I know that Arduino kind of started to move out from the hobbyist kind of grade and moving into industrial PLC and trying to capture that market. And I can't help but notice there is a, a little corporation going behind my back, which kind of looks like a move in a similar direction. Well, a lot of people don't realize we've always been selling to industry, even from the Pi 1. Um, we've always sold, sold to industry. And really, the selling to industry is what pays for us, pays for the hobbyists, it pays for the, the makers, it pays for the education side. And a lot of people don't realize that we sell everything at the same price for everybody. We don't give quantity discounts to industrial customers. So everybody pays the same price for something. And that means that that price, the industrial sales, which now account for probably 70, 72, 75% of our sales and have done for some years, um, they pay for all these other people to get the product at the same price as everybody else. It, it, it drives the price of the product down. That is very interesting because uh, to people like me, I know Raspberry Pi through the educational um, areas. So if you ask makers or kids at school, like, what is a board to develop with? They say, like, oh, go for Raspberry Pi because it's, it's everything. It has a great community support and stuff like that. And you don't realize that there is that industrial aspect of it when you create embedded devices for whether they are uh, monitors, whether they are complete systems, and so you support a lot of industries. Yeah, and um, it, it's it, well, even industry doesn't realize we're in, in this yeah, if that makes sense. So quite a lot, what we do find quite frequently is people are using Raspberry Pi for prototyping and they say, yes, it's a fantastic product, now make it into a product. They could just take what they've got now and use it, but they re-engineer it into another, product, SOC, yeah. some, another system, which seems pointless, you've done the work twice. Yes. Uh, they're prototyped on a, on a Pi and they could have just kept going because we have many thousands of customers using things like the CM modules, using Pis themselves, using zeros in products yep. out, there, out there right now.
It's been a couple of times when I opened a product which which was off the shelf uh, to, to my surprise to find CM4 board inside yeah. and I was just like, wait a minute, can you yeah. just do that? Yeah. And then I realized how much of a um, kind of business side of it Raspberry Pi has and how many well, how many fingers they have in those pipes? Uh, yes, um, I mean, most of the time we don't know where they get sold anyway. Um, so it's sometimes a surprise to us as well. Obviously, we can see on our stand here, we've got quite a few uh, companies, especially at Sharp NEC here. Um, I don't think we can see it, probably can't see it from the from the camera, but uh, they've been using CM4s in their displays. And uh, Heathrow Airport, so yes. the Terminal 5 has just been converted to use all of these, these devices. So all the displays at Heathrow Airport use CM4s. They're moving to CM5s at some point because they're pin compatible, or the majority is pin compatible, and they can just slot them in. They get twice, the two, two, three times the performance uh -huh. uh, just as a slot in board. So it's a bit of, it's fantastic, really. So, to be fair, I'm a, I'm a robotics engineer. At, at work, we make big industrial machines, but I didn't realize until like, I think year in, that all of our displays inside, with the project information and stuff like that, were powered by Raspberry Pis. Yeah. And it was just suddenly like there was like 80 Raspberry Pis working yeah. behind behind the scenes to power it, and yeah. this is where you realise how kind of how much market share you've grabbed. Yeah. And uh, I think the digital signage in industry has been a massive, massive take up for us. Uh, you can see uh, the display behind me is run by a Raspberry Pi 4, running some software from Yodec. There are loads of different digital signage companies because it's such a, a cheap way of getting very high quality output. Yeah. You've got uh, eight, a 4K output on the on the four and the five, so. And so, like, it's not just boards. You've got cameras that are getting better. Yeah. You've got edge processing that you can perform. Yeah. You have enough computing power to do it. And I know Raspberry Pi doesn't exactly want to disclose where it's heading next. <laughs> but do you have any inkling of what that direction could be for 2025 and 2026? Uh, I have an inkling. I'm just not allowed to tell you anything. I know it's sad, but uh, we're under very strict orders not to tell anybody anything. Um, I mean, that, obviously, you can look at our... We don't have a specific roadmap, but clearly we've gone from the Pi 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. There's going to be a Pi 6 at some, at some point. point. It's yeah. years away. Um, we're obviously going to keep improving the Pico range, the microcontrollers, yeah. um, producing boards with microcontrollers on, producing more hats. You can see in our cabinet there. There's lots of stuff that we can do. Um, I just can't tell you what it is. All right. Apparently, I'm not good enough to get a scoop for Electromaker, so with this, I just have to say thank you so much for talking to me. And if you want to find out more details, then in the description of this video, there's going to be for sure a link. Thanks so much. Thank you.